In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So today is the second Sunday of Lent. The second Sunday of Lent. What was last Sunday? Other than the first Sunday of Lent. What did we do? We did something really beautiful, really special at the end of the liturgy. Yes, the younger kids did confession. That's important, but there is something very special that we did on the Sunday. We might have brought something from home. Icons, right? We remember the triumph of orthodoxy. So today, we remember St. Gregory Palamas. St. Gregory Palamas is one of the great hierarchs, one of the great bishops of our church. He did something and he reminds us of something very special today. He reminds us probably what should be the hardest thing to forget. Do you know what that is? That we have bodies. Right? You would think that would be a hard thing to forget. What are you sitting on right now? You can feel the ground underneath you. You walk with your feet. You eat with your mouth. If you're Greek, you talk with your hands. We have bodies. Well, a long time ago, there was a man named Barlam. Just, uh, hopefully nobody's named Barlam, but even that name makes him sound like a bad guy, Barlam. Well, Barlam said that our bodies can't share in God's grace. That it's just our minds. We can think about God. We can come close to Him as we hear about Him, reflect on the words, but not our bodies. In fact, at the time, there were monks and nuns that were living, and they were saying that with the prayer and the rhythm of their breath, not only were they able to feel in their bodies, in their very bones, the life of God, but God even gave the gift of being able to see Him to some of these people. People that would pray and they would be able to see God. They would see the world illuminated with the light of another sun. So what I want to talk about today, and I want us to remind ourselves, as St. Gregory Palamas reminded us, that our bodies participate in the life in Christ. So last week we were already shown one of the ways in which this takes place. Icons. Icons are made out of what? Wood and paint and color. And a traditional Orthodox icon, do you know what it's made out of? This is kind of interesting. The paint is made out of egg yolk. Pretty neat, huh? and minerals, and so there's living stuff and earthy stuff all participating and showing us our Panagia, the saints, Christ. But we don't just look at the icons, right? Or do we just look at the icons? What do you guys do when you see an icon? We, go, we do the sign of the cross, right? We make the sign of the cross. Our body is participating in the prayer. But is it enough for us just to make the sign of the cross and look at the icon? What else do we do? What do we do? We kiss it. A lot of people that are not familiar with the Orthodox Church, they think that's weird. But you know what? I think it's weird that they don't want to kiss icons. If you love someone and you see their picture, and maybe they seem far away, but when you see your picture, what do you remember? What do you feel like? You feel like they're a little bit closer to you. If we love someone, we want to kiss their picture. We want to see them. We want to touch them. And the icons help us do that. What are some other ways that our bodies participate in the life of Christ? Last week was kind of a giveaway. 
But there's a lot of other ways. I'll give you a hint. You guys want a hint? Yeah? Your life in Christ began in this way. How does your life in the church begin? Yet God, God letting us come, they were allowed. Baptism, right? What's more physical than that? The whole body is plunged into the water. It splashes over the sides. You're covered in olive oil. It's, my fav- it's probably my favorite sacrament. I know I say the word favorite a lot. But you know why I love it? I love it because it's messy. It's messy like life. And that's part of what makes it so beautiful. And that brings me to my next point. Beauty. It's all around us in the church, in the people that we sit with. These are physical things. What do we have over here? My good friend, Dr. Vlahos, every year he has this bread made. You know why? Because he loves St. Gregory Palamas. And he loves St. Gregory Palamas because St. Gregory Palamas loves him and loved his family. And he wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for St. Gregory. So it's not enough for my friend to just say, well, I'm grateful for him. He wants to do something, right? He wants to have something made. He wants to share in the celebration of the saint. And so we bring bread. In Greece, almost every holiday, there's a special bread that's baked. We have tsureki, we got Christopsomi, we got the Christ bread at Christmas, we have the Lazaraki, because our bodies, our lives, all of life shares in the life of the church. What are some other ways? I'll give you a hint. Light a candle. We light a candle and we say a prayer. It's not just us and our bodies that are now participating in that prayer. But guess who else is saying that prayer with us? The bees. Did you know that? Because who makes the beeswax? Bees. So the bees are participating in the prayer. And where do the bees get the stuff to make the beeswax from? I'm not an etymologist, so I don't know this for sure, but I think it's the case. Flowers. And so when you light that candle, you're praying, your body's praying, the fire is praying, the bees are praying with you, and all the flowers and the sun and the rain that gave life to those flowers are sharing in that prayer. Yes, bees get honey, right? They give us, they share with us, and we help them by sharing, by bringing their gift to church for them. Now there's two more things, two last things that I want to talk about. One is specific to what St. Gregory was talking about, and that was the role of the body in prayer. And we already talked about how we can make the sign of the cross, but another way that our body can participate in that prayer is through a prostration. Does anybody know what a prostration is? Yeah, it's when you make the sign of the cross and you bow down. So sometimes you just bow down and you touch the ground and make the sign of the cross. Sometimes you do a full prostration and you put your forehead on the ground. But this again is your body participating in the prayer. The monks that St. Gregory was defending, they would take the prayer, the Jesus prayer, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me, and they would connect this prayer with their breathing. And so with every breath, every breath was sanctified by the name of Jesus and every breath became an offering. And so we can take the prayer and it can become the rhythm of our breathing. When I walk the dog, sometimes I like to say the Jesus prayer with my footsteps. Right? That may seem like a strange thing to do, but Kyrie Jesus Christ, 
eleisonme. And after a while, what I noticed is that even if I wasn't in the mood to pray, maybe I was grumpy, maybe I didn't get enough sleep, maybe we got into an argument and my wife didn't realize that I was right and she was wrong. <laughs> Forgive me, I, she's probably watching this right now. But the point is that because my body has shared in that prayer, that sometimes just taking those steps the prayer starts to come. And sometimes I even try to push it down because my mind, where my ego is, wants to be right. But the prayer is there and by God's grace, it helps to humble me. Now the last one. The last one and the most important way in which our bodies participate in the life of Christ. And it's the most bodily thing perhaps we can imagine. It's the reason why we come here every Sunday. I, you know it. You know it. You're just being shy. The servant of God. Say it real loud. Communion. Our most intimate, our most beautiful experience of communion, the deepest, most profound way in which we connect to Jesus Christ is through receiving Holy Communion, eating and drinking the very body and blood of Christ. When you go home, what I want you guys to do, maybe not because it's probably going to be raining, but I want you guys to find a flower outside, maybe a dandelion, or a rose. Don't take it from someone else's garden. But find a flower and place it in front of an icon. Again, to remind us that beauty, that the body, that all of creation can share in the grace, the life, and the love of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen.